Who's there? Richard, I've been waiting for you. Sanjay? But you're in jail. No, no, that was all a mistake. Everything's fine now. And wonderful news, the money has come. What money? The money for the festival, just like I told you it would. It just came. It's on your desk. So everything's going to be all right? Yes. Yes, look. Is that all there is? Put your head on the desk, Richard. or proudly or weak, but I'll never play a character whose name one dare not speak. <laughs> I'll play Hamlet in doublet and hose or either of the Dromeos, but sorry, I won't play Mackers. <laughs> I'll play Richard the Third with a hump and a wing or Henry the Eighth, that selfish pig, but sorry, I don't do Mackers. Every soul that plays this role, Miss Ginger A or Death, I'd rather sweep the bloody stage than ever do my <laughs> no will. So give me King Lear, Cleopatra, Romeo, Juliet, doesn't matter. I'll play them all for free. But I'd be crackers to take on Mackers. You see, I'm Scottish about the Scottish tragedy. Oh, hi. <laughs> Hello? Wake up, please. You're in my spot. Park somewhere else. No, I'm the executive director of this festival. You're in my parking spot. You run this place? Well, myself and a few others. Hey, hey, hey! Can you get them to sign this? Who? The actors at Macbeth. You're here to see Macbeth? Yeah, if I can get in. I hear it's a hard ticket. Where did you hear that? Everywhere. Sorry about crashing your zone. I'm with the van. How many tickets do you need? Four. Four? No, Margaret, no. You said there were tickets. I told them to come. No, for tonight. It's opening. You should have had them come to previews. I did. They came. They didn't want to see it again. What'd you say? Flynn. Her friends came to previews, and they want to see it again. To Macbeth? Are they young people? Pretty young. 22. Young people want to see the show? Yes. Young people. There's nothing I can do, Margaret. Tell your little friends I'm sorry. This is bullshit. And who are you? I'm Jeffrey Tennant. You've cleaned up. Yes, well, I have an advisor now, don't I? I need uh, Maria. Can you track her down for me? Of course. Anything else? Have you had breakfast? Yes, but it was inedible. I'm starving. I'll send someone. Anna, can you get me Jeffrey, please? <laughs> Anna! Richard? Oh, Jeffrey. They're young people. Out there, gathering in the parking lot. Should I have Nahum chase him away? No, no, no. It's, it's the answer to my prayers. No. No, I don't want to speak too soon. But, I mean, it's, it's good. It's a good sign, right? Sure. No, Jeffrey. Mm. There are young people out there. <laughs> That's great, Rich. I have things to do. Of course. We'll see you later on. The cast is gathering at 7.15. Without Ellen. She has a final costume fitting. I'm so not happy about this, Jeffrey. It's the only way we're going to get Henry to give us the show that we want, and you know that. Talking about Ellen, lying to her, plotting behind her back. Oh, so suddenly you're a big fat fan of Ellen's? Is that why you let her use your cell phone all the time? Is that why you run out and get her cookies and fags? Is that why you fetch her dry cleaning? You're right. I have no problem screwing Ellen. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, good. Now that we have solved your ethical dilemma, there are 
some specific changes I would like to make, some lighting cues, a few small design elements. A tree? Yes, a tree, a small tree, yes. You didn't say anything about a tree. Well, it came to me in the night. Oh, God. Well, you don't have to think about it. Just do it. Just go to the booth. I'll be there in a few minutes. We can run over the cues. Fuck me, Jeffrey. Well, if that's what it takes. Hi, Ellen. Hi. Hi. Something going on. Well, yes, we're opening Macbeth tonight. With Henry. With Henry in the lead, yes. Henry Reed Love. Yes, Ellen, I put him back as I promised. God, how hard is it for you to believe me? I mean, what kind of relationship do we have? Okay, sorry. Oh, well, thank you. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have a very, very unpleasant task to attend to. It's just part of my job, you know. Artistic director. Thank you, Jeffrey. You're welcome, Helen. Hey, I'm sorry I kept you waiting. Look at you, Jeffrey. You look positively disease-free. That's the hairdo. So I, uh, I thought we should have a little talk. I don't know why I bother with these. They don't seem to do anything. What are those, antidepressants? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I take them by the fistful. All different kinds. Nothing works. Oh, Anna tells me you uh, asked lighting for three more for Nels. Did you get them? Yes. Good, good. Um, thing is, I, I don't, I, I don't think I can come to your opening, and it's not you, it's the play. It's so um, full of life, and, and I can't feel anything uh, so... Did you say you got those Fresnels? Yes, I did, yes. Good, good. Are you happy, Darren? Happy? Uh, yes, I suppose I'm happy. Well, there, see, that's why you can direct this play. I couldn't take it on. I mean, how can you direct Romeo and Juliet if you are dead inside? I mean, how, I ask you? Well, I don't know. Oh, I think. Well, you can't, that's how. I mean, all you would do is mock it, you know? Make some kind of dull, anti-romantic, vaguely condescending, shallow fucking commentary on what that play actually is. And I don't even understand this. I mean, is it age that numbs you? Because when I was younger, boy, I... Oh, look, here, I found something the other day. Look at this. What was this, 1980? Uh, Godspell, yeah? <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, we liked each other, didn't we? Yes, well, I recall there was a brief period of camaraderie in the early 80s. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ah, oh, look at you. <laughs> you were a big goof. <laughs> you, were, you were happy then. <laughs> I was, I was happy then. Anyway, you break a leg, okay? And I'm gonna do my goddamn level best to make sure that you have those Fresnels. No, I don't even want you keep that. I can't even stand up. Look at it. I have a tech. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Go ahead and break your legs. <laughs> Oh, Jesus! <laughs> How do you cry like that? I think about my grandmother. Very convincing. Well, let's hope it works. Otherwise, I have debased myself for nothing. Breathman? Richard, you have to come down to the box office. It's chaos. There's a mob, and they're chanting. They want tickets for opening. They don't understand how openings work. And they won't listen. They've got a headphones on. Youthquake. What? Youthquake. That's what Sanjay said would happen. It's a youthquake. Please come down. Some of them have guitars. Soon, soon. I'll be there in a minute. Sorry, Darren. Just give me a second here. Jeffrey gave me a ton of last minute changes to input. Mm. Still playing catch up. Yeah. Okay. Continue. 
It was the nightingale and not the lark that pierced the fearful hollow of thine ear. Nightly she sings on yon pomegranate tree. Called? Anything? More gray. More gray. Okay, uh, we'll take out the yellows. 42 through 60 down 10%. Continue. <clears throat> it, it was the lark, the herald of the morn, no nightingale. Look, love, what envious streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east. Ugh. Hold. Oh, God. This is a shitty production. Yeah. And we have to run it for 12 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Everybody's going to be watching this shitty production thinking, oh, my God, look at those poor bastards stuck up there in these cages in this shitty, shitty production. Well, at least something good came out of it. Yeah. Hey. Come here for a sec. What? Just come here. Everyone laughs. I don't care what they think. Right. Okay. Now, there's something you don't see every day of the week. I hate it. I hate it all. I want to change everything. I want warm light. I want those balls deflated and removed. Did you hear that? Not a zombie! I have a soul I can feel. Take those cases off. Take those ridiculous chest pieces off your hands. <laughs> Exercise. Hey, excuse me. Uh, do you guys have a moment? Well, we do now. Great. Thank you. I didn't know who else to turn to. What is it, lovey? Look, this is very difficult for me. Well, take your time. For a long time now, I've been guarding a secret. And what? He's got a secret. I told you, Ducky, I can spot him a mile off. I want to audition for the musical. What? He wants to audition. <laughs> it's for the Gilbert and Sullivan, is it, lovey? Yeah, I, I want to. I mean, I've always wanted to sing in a musical. And I thought that since you guys were the more experienced members of the cast, that maybe you could help coach me. What's he going on about? I'll tell you later, Ducky. <laughs> I don't know how he hears the alarm in the morning. <laughs> well, of course we'll help you, dearie. That's great. Oh, lovely, Major General. <laughs> Always a good choice. Yeah? OK, well, let's go. I did this one like four years ago. Yeah, okay. I thought it was just one of those weird theater stories. Oh, it is one of those weird theater stories, but it's true. Right. Check it out. All right, I guess bring on the Balkowski. Bring on the Balkowski. <laughs> <laughs> what about Benedict wanting to sing? I really he walks with numbers all day. I mean, he's not a machine. He has a soul, presumably. Presumably. <laughs> hey, uh, here she comes. Uh, stick together this time, right? <clears throat> This has been a difficult process for me personally, and for you as well, I imagine. I think I was afraid of this play on some level, and so I chose to mark it. Forgive me, Sarah, you'll understand when you're my age. Everybody, smear some of this glow paint on your hands and then hold them up to the light to charge. I sapped the sensuality out of this play, and because we open tomorrow, I feel it's important to do something drastic in order to rediscover it, hence the Belkovsky exercise. I know it's controversial, and if anyone wants to leave, you can do so now. Good. In a minute, I'm going to turn off the lights, 
When you hear the music start, drop your robes, step forward, and have a good grope. <laughs> Are we ready? Yes. Yes. yes! When you hear the music stop, return to your marks and put your robes back on. I promise nobody will get caught in the light. <laughs> Enter. Break a leg. I'll do my best. Well, it's all anyone can expect, isn't it? Hi. I've set all the props. We're ready to go. Awesome. <sighs> Ellen was late again. Of course. <laughs> she claimed she didn't even know about the cast meeting. <laughs> you told her there was a cast meeting? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know what? What are you sorry about now? Ellen knows about the meeting. I told her. I'm so sorry. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, where are you going? If you think I'm going, I'm going to tell Henry what's going on. I know you were lying to me, a snake. No, no, Ellen, I can't let you do that. Henry, let go of me. No, it's for the good of the play. For the good of the play? This is a horrible, horrible betrayal of an actor's trust in his director. Well, and what about the rest of the cast? Aren't you betraying their trust by telling him? Ah, this has nothing to do with trust. You're using them. Have a great show, Ellen. Hey, Hey, key. Ah. Don't let her out until we're well underway. Understood. I think we're gonna be cool here because no one can see us. Surely you can handle a few last minute changes. All right. Where the fuck have you got me? Follow me. <sighs> okay, you come off upstage left. Exit up right. No, no, that's not possible now. There's a great honking flat there. Now just keep your eyes open, keep your ears open. You're gonna be fine. You are a fucking prick. You're on.
So fair and foul a day I have not seen. Ian, how could you? I must confess, I love drama. Where are you taking me? I cannot function under these conditions. This isn't theater, this is improvisation. Well, it's a kind of theater, isn't it? Very alive, very exciting. Fuck off. This is supernatural soliciting cannot be ill. It cannot be good. Jean, a reminder, have a rope waiting for Mr. Breedlove, stage right, as discussed. Oh, bastard. Ellen, you have to get focus here. This is your director speaking. It's not Jeffrey, it's the director of this play. You know what you have to do. Me. Between me and the ape pacing in the wings over there, which one of us is actually thinking about this play, honestly? Damn you. What? The letter. Do you think she will? Oh, I hope to hell she does. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. When goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall sun that morrow see. Your face, my Thane, is as a book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, look like the time. Bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, like the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for. And you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall to all our nights and days to come. That was good. Give solely I thought it was gratuitous. And what? Mastodon. The nudity. I thought it was good. I thought it was gratuitous. What? Look up clear. The nudity. I thought it was good. Shut up. Mr. Fear, leave all the rest to me. He won't. Go to your mark. Go. Miss Fanshaw and Mr. Breedlove, place it, please, now. All right, you fucking lunatic! What brilliant entrance do you have in store for me now? I'm popping out of some fucking wedding cake. Stage right. Fuck! Yeah, had we now our country's honor. Richard. Were the graced person of our Banquo present. How's it going? Or may I rather challenge He's furious with me. Well, they're both furious with me. My royal lord. What are you doing? I'm going on. What? As the ghost. Are you insane? You can't go out there. Once more onto the bridge. Grace us with your royal company. The table is full. Oh, here is a place reserved, sir. Where? Oh, here, my good lord. Oh, what is that moves you so? Which of you have done this? What, my lord? Thou canst not say I did it. Never shake thy gory locks at me. Good choice. An empty chair is better. Yeah, I thought so. The fit is momentary. Hey, there's a tree there. Bastard Jeffrey. Okay, you're gonna have to play the fight six feet downstage. Kill him. Jerry. Young Bish Seward is usually slaughtered in Macbeth. It's supposed to be hard and brutal. Macbeth feels invincible. He feels immortal. Yeah, of course. But he's not. He's just a guy. So tonight, don't die so easy. Okay? Okay. Okay. They have tied
tied me to a stake. They, this last is mine, have tied me to a stake. They have tied me to a stake. I cannot fly. I cannot fly. They like, I must fight the cold. What's he that is not born of woman? Such a one I am to fear or oh, none. What is thy name? Thou'lt be afeared to hear it. No, though thou call thyself a hotter name than any's in hell. My name is Macbeth. The devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful to mine ear. No, nor more fearful. Thou liest, abhorred tyrant. With my sword, I'll prove the lie thou speakest. <laughs> Swords, I smile at weapons. Oh boy! Oh, I was born a woman. Okay, that was maybe a little Friday the Thirteenth. Lose it next time. Probably best. Yeah, John. <laughs> I spent hundred twenty-five thousand dollars on that thrust. Henry has not set foot on it once. Get him out there. You got it. Turn, hold on, turn! Of all men else, I have avoided thee. But get me back! My soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword. The bloodier villain that turns can get thee out! Stands the usurper's cursed head. The time is free. I see thee compassed with thy kingdom's pearl, that speak my salutation in their minds, whose voices I desire aloud with mine. Hail, King of Scotland! Hail, King of Scotland! Henry, that was excellent work. Oh, oh, oh. You are a complete fucking dick, Jeffrey Tennant. I'm Henry Breedlove. I'm a great actor. I do not need this shit. I don't want to feel that kind of terror ever again. But you know what? It works for you. Just listen. Oh, oh. oh Alan, that was just boom. Oh. Hey, hey, oh. You actually stripped me naked on stage. I'm sorry. I'm so, so, so sorry. your tickets and we sold them but now I need them back I'm sorry mr. Gilchrist but we couldn't accommodate your school group on any day most of our shows are down to a few seats you couldn't give seats away two months ago but now you're the big hot ticket you're turning people away oh you're enjoying this aren't you yes I am well, at least give me a pair for myself and my wife two seats together don't have to be <laughs> I am the 
the very model of a modern major general with I can't do a thing. How's his vibrato? Forced but steady. Hey, up. Here comes the E-flat. Oh, he hit it. Oh, good man. Oh, I'm getting quite teary. It's like watching the sun we'll never have. Oh, well, it's inspiring, really. Horrible man like that, changing himself, living a dream. All my military knowledge, though I'm plucky and adventure, has only brought me down to the beginning of the century. But still in matters vegetable, animal and mineral, I am the very model of the modern major general. That was wonderful. Really, Richard, that was wonderful. <laughs> Thanks. I had no idea you could sing, or had any desire to sing, or, or perform. All right, well, I'll wait to hear from you, and please, no special treatment. Of course not. Okay. Hi. Right. Can't wait to see you dance. Excuse me? It's slide, turn, kick, slide, turn, kick, step, twist, present, arms, and jump. Got it? S step, twist, and jump. It's easy, and five, six, seven, eight. Who does he remind me of? My cousin Charlie, the one with palsy. Oh, that's right. Poor mother. You're not going to say anything? You called the meeting. It's not a meeting. It's a chat. Oh, how nice. What will we chat about? The weather? Hmm. How about the slap? You know why I slapped you. So I can expect to be slapped every time I give you direction you don't agree with? No, sir. I will continue to toe the line, sir. Are you going to the Romeo and Juliet opening? Oh, a new tactic. No, it's not a tactic. Why would you ask me that? Oh, I don't know. We were in it once. That was a billion years ago, Jeffrey. A billion years ago. Yes, it was, wasn't it? Are we done, Chuck? Sure. Should I leave, then? Unless you enjoy awkward silences, yes, you should leave now. I suppose you heard. No, about what? My audition. Oh yeah, how'd it go? It went really badly. Yeah, everybody heard. I don't understand. How do actors do it? How do they deal with the rejection? They drink. Sounds good. Your office? Sure. Well, he was pretty upset. Well, and then he cheered up considerably when I told him the average actor in Canada only makes $11,000 a year. Well, it takes a lot more than talent to become an actor. A lack of ambition is absolutely essential. <laughs> you haven't said anything about my performance. Oh, um... I know, I'm rusty. It's been years. I overplayed it, didn't I? No, no. You were great. Really. Still, I think a little less gory lock-shaking tomorrow. Yes, that's a good idea. Leave them wanting more. Soup's up. What? This is my life. I live in a storage room. I eat soup with a dead man. It could be worse. How? You could be the dead man. Mm. Did you ever think of that? <laughs> eat your soup. Oh, this is insane, Oliver. This is more insane than even I am comfortable with. What are you saying? Are you breaking up with me? We're not together. This is exactly what I'm talking about. We just collaborated on that play. Yes, we did. I owed you. A collaboration is a very intimate thing. Yes, it is. And now it's over. Right. Oh. 
Where are you going? I have to introduce Romeo and Juliet. Well, uh, you coming back? I don't know. Maybe. I hope not. Not if I can help it. Thank you, Oliver. You're welcome. Good evening. It is, I am told, a tradition here that on the final night of opening week, a token of thanks be presented to uh, <clears throat> our season's major sponsor. So I would like to invite Mr. Barnaby Henderson to come up on stage and accept this framed photograph signed by the entire Romeo and Juliet company. Mr. Henderson. Thank you so much. I, I just have a few words. I'm, uh, I'm very pleased to accept this gift on behalf of Braymore Industries, a diversified technology company providing innovative and practical business solutions for over 30 years. <laughs> on, a, on a personal note, I'd just like to say how especially moved I am to be here tonight. Romeo and Juliet is one of the greatest love stories ever told and one that has special meaning for my wife, Carol, and me. You see, we've been married 37 years. And in all that time, I don't think we've ever missed a production of this play that we could get to. Carol can't be here tonight. She's in hospital, recovering from heart surgery. Uh, she's going to be all right, the doctors tell me. But you know, when I think of all the times when we nearly gave up on each other, I get kind of shaky. I wasn't much of a husband there for a while. I'll tell you that for free. But an experience like this, it teaches you something about the power of love. It certainly does. Well. Enjoy. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay unseen. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. How camest thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb, and the place death, considering who thou art. If any of my kinsmen find thee here. With love's light wings that I overperch these walls. For stony limits cannot hold love at, and what love can do, that dares love attempt. Therefore thy kinsmen are no let to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. Back. There lies more peril in thine eye than twenty of their swords. I hate this play. I would not be yeah. they saw thee. I have night's cloak to hide me from their eyes. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than death prolong it, wanting of thy love. Now you watch and you feel miserable because you don't have that kind of passion in your life. No, Nobody of, does. It's a fantasy. Let me counsel and it's irresponsible. I, I am no pilot. Yeah. Yet wert thou as far as that vast ocean washed with the farthest sea. You know, I think I it's painfully accurate. The two idiots meet, they fall in love, they're happy, briefly, and then all hell breaks loose. It happens all the time. Lest that thy love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? <laughs> Lucy. 
Rose. You're my only friend, isn't that pathetic? Yeah, that is pathetic. See my love as deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have for both are infinite. I owe 27,000. I was watching the show. Vagabond, like on stage, you're always going up. Down, my back up. God, that's exactly what it's supposed to be. This is a bit of a goose. Reminds me of the old times. My God, remember our God's All right, well, you two decide. No, 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 no. I knew where my entrances were. Well, I saw your entrance. <laughs> <laughs> well, you tell me, okay. Did someone throw cold water at you or what? Because I'm <laughs> You gave all the performance to your tickets? No, no, tonight, four beer tickets for the performance. Or three. Three's good. Mr. Archer! That's for you, sir. Hey, hey, hey. Did a hell of a job. Thank you. A hell of a job. I got lucky. It's bullshit, okay? You took a risk, a hell of a fucking risk, and you could have been eating shit right now, but instead you're basking in glory. Am I right? How's it feel? It feels pretty sweet. <laughs> Can I say something? What? Can I say something personally off the record? Sure. This festival needs an artistic director with a strong business background. More business savvy than theater savvy. True. Why hire a crazy artist to hire other crazy fucking artists? You're right. All right? Yeah. So how would you like the job? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Can you? How? Ellen. Hi. I'm uh, crashing the party. Is that cool? Yeah, sure. Uh, me and my girlfriend. Tuesday, that's, that's her over there. She seems nice. So, uh, how are you two? Good. Good. I thought for sure you'd be married by now. <laughs> well, we broke up pretty quickly, actually. What the fuck? You, you broke up? You broke up with me so you could be together. Well, it's complicated, Sloan. No, it isn't. You guys love each other, right? We did. It doesn't go away. Oh, yeah, it can. It's different when you're older. That's bullshit. No, Sloan, honestly, we're just, we're a couple of losers, that's all. We're miserable, both of us. Happily. Really? You guys are so obviously meant to be together. So obvious it pisses me off, all right? What the fuck? Just deal with it. You fucking broke my heart, Ellen. All right? But I knew you were right. I mean, come on. Wow. Out of the mouths of babes. <sighs> I don't want to be here anymore. Take me home. <laughs> oh, me and study. I can't go on tonight. I'm drinking with my buddy. I'm getting good and tight. Before they raise the curtain, I'll be higher than a kite. So call me understudy. I can't go on tonight. Tell the cast and crew to break a leg. Break a leg. I'll roll me out another bloody keg. I need to ease the pain that life can bring. And liquor is what will hit the spot. The play is not the thing. So call me understudy. I think it only right. My diction will be muddy. I'll never find me light. Before the intermission, I'll be pissing on a sprite. So call me understudy. 
I can't go on. He can't go on. I won't go on. He shan't go on. I can't go on tonight. That's right. More are men's ends marked than their lives before. The setting sun and music at the close as the last taste of sweet is sweet as last. Rich in remembrance more than things lost past. I'm gonna see if David left the taps open. Get one for me, would you? 